All right, welcome back to Related Rates. We are back in your pink packet, okay? Um, we are looking at example eight. Our goal today is to do three more examples in this video as kind of your notes, okay? We're kind of stepping up the level of the related rates that we're doing. We're adding more variables and we're adding trig functions today. So it's going to get a little bit busy. Okay, uh, same kind of ideals hold as yesterday. We're gonna need a diagram. If we can draw one, we're gonna need to uh, come up with a given and a find. We're going to have to write an equation that we can then differentiate um, and then uh, hopefully kind of plug and chug from there. So uh, example eight is kind of fun. We've got a hot air balloon rising straight up from a level field and it's being tracked by a range finder. Okay, so I think that's just like, a, kind of like an electronic device that kind of measures um, where and how high up the air, hot air balloon is. Okay, and that finder is 500 feet from liftoff. So I kind of envision this, I don't know what a range finder looks like. So let's say it's just in this little building, okay? But I do know that that is 500 feet, right, from my hot air balloon, which is hopefully just rising vertically as a hot air balloon should. Kind of looks like a light bulb, whatever. Okay, basket, da, 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 da. okay. All right, so here's my hot air balloon, adorable, okay? Um, we do also know at the moment the range finder's elevation, so this guy is tracking the angle of elevation right here, which we're gonna call theta, right? Um, the angle, pi force, so 45 degrees. The angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. How fast is the balloon rising, okay? So some things that I would call these in this diagram, since we're back to like a horizontal, I would call this X, I'd call this Y. If we need this, I would call it Z, and this angle here is gonna be theta. So that's gonna help us determine what to call our given and our finds, right? So let's start reading this. 500 feet, that's not like a feet per minute or a feet per second, so that's not a rate. That's just something that I labeled in my diagram, okay? At the moment, the range finder's elevation is the angle pi fourth, so that's like the moment in time I'm gonna find my find. So I'm finding it when theta equals pi fourth, right? That I will save for later. The angle is increasing at a rate. Here's my buzzword, right? So I'm going to call this the theta dt. And that makes sense, right? Because it's measured in radians per minute. So that's got to be a theta, which measures angles, right? How fast is the balloon rising? So that's the rate of change of its vertical distance, right? So I'm going to find dy dt, okay? So this is all the information I have right now. And so I have to analyze, as always, these variables here and here, right? I have to find something that will relate y to theta, okay? So theta is in here, so I'm gonna use sine, cosine, tangent, something along those lines, right? But I also have this 500 here, right? So if I consider this my right angle, I have hypotenuse, right? This is my opposite, and this is my adjacent. So it seems to me that tangent is gonna be the best idea. So I'm gonna write tangent of theta equal to y over 500, okay? This is not changing, this is a building that's stuck on the ground. Right? So we're not moving that at all. This is a constant, unchanging value in this problem. Okay? So if this is the equation that I'm uh, going to differentiate, I'm going to go ahead and differentiate it. Okay? So the derivative of the left-hand side, right, tangent theta, is one operation. It's no chain rule, right? Derivative is secant squared theta times d theta dt. That's the, um, because of the relationship between this variable and the t. Okay, so I have to attach that there. This is basically saying 1 500th y, right? So the coefficient of y is 1 500th and then times dy dt for that implicit nature of this problem, okay? All right, so now I've got some things that I can put in, right? Apparently theta is pi fourths, so I can do secant of pi fourths. I'm gonna rewrite it this way so that we're sure to handle this squared correctly. So that's secant of pi fourths, right, squared. d theta dt, that was my given, that's 0.14. And then over here I get 1 500. And then dy dt remains my letters because that's my variable, right? Super cool. All right, so secant of pi fourths, right, that's cosine, uh, reciprocal of cosine of pi fourths, which is root two over two. So this is actually two over root two squared times 0.14 times 500, right? If I multiply both sides by 500 to get rid of that, okay? Uh, so what is this? This ends up being two, 
essentially, right, when I do all this. And 2 times 500 is 1,000, and 1,000 times 0.14, I can actually kind of do all this in my head, even though it kind of didn't look like that at the start. I get 140, right? I move that decimal place three times when I multiply it by 1,000. And then I consider my units, right? dy, dt, that means I'm going to do um, feet in this problem per minute. Okay? And that should make sense. It's positive, right? Because this guy is getting higher and higher off the ground, I assume. So that's how fast it's rising at that moment in time. Okay? That's my final answer. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do example nine. Okay? I think we're going to introduce three variables in this example, so it's going to get hectic. Okay, so we have a police cruiser. The most important part of this one is the diagram, right? You screw up the diagram, and then this one's all downhill from there. So let's see. We've got a police cruiser approaching a right-angled intersection from the north. Okay, so this is my drawing right now. Okay, it's a right angle. He's coming down this way. Now, he might go this way, too, but um, in my head, I'm assuming this is going to happen. And it's probably bad to assume that, but let's keep reading. It says it's chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner and is now moving straight east. Okay, so maybe I drew it right because I've done this problem like a thousand times. <laughs> okay, so the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection. So that's this guy right here. This is the cruiser, right? And then the car, this is the car he's chasing. Bad guys, basically. is 0.8 miles to the east. The police determine with radar that the distance between them, uh-oh, here's my Z, right? and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour and the instant of measurement, what's the speed of the car? Go. All right, so let's go to town here. We've got some given information, and we've got some find information. So my given information is telling me, um, let's see, I'm not going to write these down because these are not rates. So I'm going to keep reading until I find a rate. The distance between them and the car is increasing. So this right, is going to be z, this is going to be y, and that's going to be x because of this right angle. So my given is that dz dt is equal to 20 miles per hour. The cruiser is moving at 60, so that means my cruiser guy, which is coming down here, right, since he's heading down toward, towards this point, right, okay, towards the intersection, I'm going to say that he is negative. So dy dt is negative 60 miles per hour because he's moving towards this point that they both kind of emanated from or have in common. The car hopefully would have a positive value because it's moving this way to the east, right? Okay, what's the speed of the car? So I'm finding the horizontal rate of change, right? dx, dt, that's the speed of the car. And the moment I'm doing that is when the cruiser, so when y equals 0.6, and when the car, which is x, equals 0.8, right? So that's how I establish the variables and how I use those, okay? All right, so now I can go ahead and think about my variables that I need to relate. Of course, I have x and y and z. So this is the first time, right, that we have all three variables to um, relate. And it's going to be just a simple Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared does equal z squared, okay? And I'm going to differentiate that with respect to time. And of course, we did a little bit of this yesterday. This derivative is 2x dx dt. This guy is 2y dy dt. And this guy is 2z dz dt. Okay, so I'm going to be plugging in a lot of values. I need to make sure I put them in the right spot. So I'm going to do 2 times x, which was 0.8, right, from up here, uh, times dx dt. That's uh, what I'm trying to find, right? So that'll be my letters plus 2 times y times dy dt, which is negative 60 from over here. And then I've got 2 times z, which, uh-oh, I don't know, times dz dt, which is 20. Okay? So that goes in there. So my z here, right, I'm going to have to get, like, take a picture right at this moment in time where this guy is 0.8, this guy is 0.6. What will z be? right? That's kind of the moment in time that we're talking about, okay? Well, this is a 3, 4, 5, right? This guy's 0.6, this guy's 0.8. Z must be 1.0. You could physically do the Pythagorean theorem, right? If you do not believe me, okay, what is this? 0.6 squared is 
plus 6.4 equal to z squared. We've got 10 equal to z squared. Wait, what? Oh, 0 0.36, 0 0.64. So we have 1 equal to z squared, so z is 1.0. Okay, you can kind of see that 3, 4, 5 relationship here. Yeah. So I'm going to put that way over here, the number 1, right in there. And I'm going to start to figure these out. So 2 times 0 0.8, right, I know is 1.6 dx dt. Um, what is this? Six, negative 120. What is this? Negative 72. And this is 40. That is good. This does not feel right. Negative 120. Well, I guess that is right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add 72 to that side. And so I get 1.6 dx dt equals 112. And now if I would divide that by 1.6 on both sides, right, I get dx dt is if you actually divide this on your calculator, right, you get 70 miles per hour, okay? So think about, is our answer positive? Yes, we expected it to be. Is that a reasonable speed for the bad guy to be traveling? Yes, okay, we didn't get like 190 miles per hour, okay? Um, it was kind of a reasonable answer, so that's one way you can kind of check, okay, what's going on. All right, one more to do together here in your notes, and then you can uh, start to do a little bit of practice. Um, we're looking at example three. Okay. All right. And what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and pause the video right now. Okay. Uh, I want you to go ahead and read it, get your given and your fine. And I want you to pause it um, and see if you can get this one on your own. Okay. So go ahead and hit pause. Okay. Coming back together now, let's go ahead and look at your work and see if we have the same things. Okay. So the answer, right, ends up being that dx dt, if you use their variables, the way that they gave them to you, uh, ends up being negative 500 miles per hour. But then the question asks, what's the speed of the plane? So our actual answer for speed, since it's always the absolute value, is 500 miles per hour, right? Okay, so that's that, okay? So let's see if our givens match. So I have my given right, as being that S is decreasing. So this distance is getting smaller. He's getting closer to this tracking station, right? So that's maybe if you're missing the variable or not getting negative 500, that's probably it. Okay, when S is 10 miles, what's the speed of the plane? You might not know, maybe uh, the, the speed of the plane, we're gonna call that the ground speed, right? It's like it's uh, relation to X on the ground, how fast it's traveling. So that's dx dt. Maybe that would have been a bad one to have you try. <laughs> I don't know if you would have caught on to that. So we've got uh, S equals 10 minus is our moment when we're going to do this calculation. So I'm looking at X and I'm looking at S, right? And I'm trying to relate them in this triangle. I do notice that this plane is flying six miles above the ground. And that is probably, for all intents and purposes, not changing. So my equation is X squared plus 6 squared equals S squared. Okay. At any point, if you want to pause it now and see if you can get the rest of this, try it again, uh, please feel free to do that. Okay. Um, but so if we keep working it out and I differentiate this with respect to time, I should get 2x dx dt, uh, basically plus nothing, right, because that's a constant. And so I have 2s ds dt, and then I'm going to put in values. I know, um, I don't know x yet, I'll save that. Um, I know dx dt is my variable. I do know that S is 10 and DS DT I'm putting in is negative 400, right? So my X is going to be determined from a side calculation, right? So when this guy is 6, X is the mystery. Turns out S is 10, right? So it's a 3, 4, 5 times 2. So X must be 8 miles, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here, okay? And so I get 16 DX DT equal to negative 8,000, right? It's more, okay. And so when I divide that out, you see how we end up with the negative 500 um, for, for the rate of change. But then when it asks me for the actual speed of the plane, 
I give 500 miles per hour is my answer. Okay?